this is our lesson on the simple defense mechanisms of the airways. So, the pulmonary system and the airway, uh, much like other organ systems in the body, needs to maintain a level of homeostasis. That means, whenever there is a stimulus that changes the environment of the pulmonary system, homeostasis will try to return it to the original state, uh, which is the healthy state. So, whenever there are noxious stimuli or irritating stimuli, or whenever there are foreign substances or organisms in the airways, there are defense mechanisms that try to get rid of these substances. So that is what we'll be talking uh, in a short while.
here in the left is a healthy mucociliary escalator. So the mucus has a quick way of uh, exiting the terminal bronchioles and entering progressively the larger airways. Se uh, tertiary bronchus, secondary bronchus, primary bronchus, and then eventually into the trachea. And in the trachea, it will still continue to beat upwards up into the mouth. Okay? But if you have an unhealthy mucociliary escalator, as what happens in a person who smokes, the movement of the cilia, the beating of the mucus is slow. So that mucus will tend to stay longer in the airways. The next defense mechanism is the cough reflex. So what happens in a cough reflex is there is a stimulus that elicits the cough, whether that is distension of the airways, so the airways get stretched uh, quickly uh, by foreign matter, or a chemical stimulus, for example, a highly irritating substance, for example, chili powder, okay, or any other irritating substance for that matter, even alcohol, can serve as a chemical stimulus. What happens? The chemical stimulus is detected by nerves in the larynx, in the trachea, and in the bronchi, even the smaller airways. In the trachea, a particularly sensitive structure would be the carina. The carina is when the trachea bifurcates or divides into two bronchi. So that region where it divides is extremely sensitive. The inner surface of the voice box or the larynx is also very sensitive towards these stimuli. So what happens? The nerves transfer the information to the vagus nerve, which is your cranial nerve number 10. And then, the vagus nerve transfers the information to the cough center in the brainstem, where, in particular, the cough center in the medulla oblongata. And so the information, uh, after being interpreted as a noxious stimulus, by the medulla oblongata, the information is met with a response. The medulla oblongata then sends out a response to trigger the laryngeal and respiratory muscles of the abdomen and diaphragm to have a coordinated activity to produce high-velocity, high-pressure air, which when released, quickly produces the cough. So how does that happen? How does um, the medulla oblongata coordinate the cough response? There will be a quick, um, rapid inspiration. So the first phase is the irritation, and this is the sensing phase. And then what happens? There will be a rapid um, voluminous inhalation, air will quickly fill um, the passages and the cavities. And then what happens? The vocal cords close. Okay? So it traps the air inside. Then what further happens? The diaphragm raises up as if you are exhaling, but this time, your airway or glottis is closed. There's air trap inside. And then the diaphragm ascends, goes up. The chest wall collapses and squeezes the air inside. And so what happens here is you are generating a lot of pressure. Okay, and then what is the uh, last phase? Expulsion. The vocal cords or the glottis quickly opens and because of the extreme pressure inside, the air and hopefully together with the noxious stimulus 
is also rapidly um, expelled or expired. Okay? So that is your cough stimulus. Rapid inhalation, closure of the vocal cords and generation of pressure, and then rapid opening of the vocal cords and also forceful expulsion of air together with the noxious stimulus.